We've talked about the science behind Swarm AI. Now let's talk about the technology. The Swarm AI system has two primary components, the Swarm interface, which is the front end client, and the AI engine, which is a cloud backend. The Swarm interface is what you see. It's what participants interact with, enabling us to capture their knowledge and wisdom and insight and intuition as they wrestle with an issue as part of a real-time system. Participants are not merely reporting their thoughts and feelings, they're revealing their thoughts and feelings through their behaviors. Of course, it's better to represent it like this, because it's more than just one client, but many clients all interacting at the exact same time, 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, and all of this data is being processed in real time by the AI engine, which is watching the behaviors of every participant, evaluating the strengths of their conviction, the level of their confidence and uncertainty, whether they're entrenched or flexible or ambivalent. This image is called a brain scan because it shows how the AI engine sees the behaviors of all the participants in real time as they wrestle with the issue at hand. The key thing to understand is that this is a system with feedback loops where the behaviors of the people influence the AI, and the AI influences the behaviors of the people. And together, they're behaving as an artificial expert that's deliberating like any intelligence would by weighing the alternatives, evaluating the options, making trade-offs, and converging on the best solution for the information at hand. And so this is how we represent the Swarm AI system with feedback loops between the Swarm clients and the AI backend creating an artificial expert. But the technology doesn't end there. We've had Swarm AI systems answer over 350,000 questions, generating a massive amounts of behavioral data. And we've been doing sophisticated machine learning on those behaviors, enabling us to turn complex deliberations into quantifiable insights. This allows us to have our AI analytics post-processing. This is where we quantify the sentiments, generating what we call a conviction index. This is also where we visualize the output so we can understand not just what the answer was, but why and how and what it means. Let me give you an example of post-processing. Let's say we want to evaluate the sentiment regarding the trustworthiness of media outlets. And let's say we want to compare the New York Times, CNN, Fox News, the BBC. We can ask a Swarm AI system a set of simple questions. For example, which is more trustworthy, the New York Times or CNN? Here you can see the system converging with AI processing on the New York Times by a little. Now, New York Times by a little doesn't seem very precise, but you're looking at the surface features. Behind the scenes is deep deliberation data. And if we ask a range of questions comparing media sources, we'll get deep deliberation data for each one. Now we can run this through our behavioral neural network, which we trained across thousands of swarming sessions. The neural network can determine conviction levels with a high degree of statistical certainty. This allows us to generate intelligence output that looks like this, giving us precise conviction comparisons across the whole set of media outlets. We can compare Infowars to CNN to Fox News to the BBC. And that's just one example of post-processing. We have many techniques for processing the intelligence we generate during each and every swarm session.